I'm looking forward to seeing what like crazy Martina is gonna look like. Zilch had a crazy oh, version. The priest had a crazy version where he like beefed up macho mode. Really dodged the bullet there. I was about to make my move. You shouldn't approach women in the mystery labyrinth. This isn't the real world. You shouldn't approach women in the real world either, Desihiko. You're a fucking menace to society, bro. You of all people to warn me about ladies. This mystery labyrinth is terrifying. No, your blatant disregard for women's personal space is fucking terrifying, Desahiko. I like him though. I've come around to my boy. I knew it would only take time. Hang on. Wow, look at this Why floor. Holy shit. To have been a suicide? It's like a yellow brick road. Even if the vial wasn't used to she damnation. Drank the poison herself. But the only thing Cotton drank from on stage was the shoveled glass. Yeah, which didn't have any liquid in it, right? Oh no, it did have liquid in it. In the poison. There's no guarantee she'd be the one to drink it herself. Yeah, 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 right. It's not how someone who wanted to die would go about it. Yeah, that's what I was saying before. Gotcha. Same thing with so wanting to I kill somebody or preparing a murder in advance is you wouldn't want to give it a 50-50 shot of you killing yourself. Hang on. Wouldn't the same be true for the culprit? Unless that was the dynamic and the person that perpetrated against Cotton and wanted to murder her didn't mind potentially dying, that's a possibility. If the glasses on stage were switched around, there's no guarantee the victim will take the poison one, right? I'm eager to see how this will play out. I want to see how much of this I have accurate. Because I think Waduna squirting the poison on her fingers of one hand to shuffle the glasses makes sense. And I remember oh, they made a note to say that she shuffled the glasses slower than usual. Because I remember very, very specific things. I can't completely rule that out. Sometimes. That's gotta be and that's something I haven't been able to let go of. It's been on my mind for a while. And I think that's the good way to execute it. It seems like it makes the most sense. Bitch, I don't know if I can. To be fair. It doesn't work like that, bro. There's minecart rides, there's Shinigami and barrels in a swimsuit. Trust me, not as fun as it sounds. There's death pits of spikes, there's falling rocks. Like, Desuhiko doesn't know what the hell he's getting himself into. Wait, whoa. That's a school chime. Right? Is it gonna pop up with the school? Are we gonna do, like, a stage play to figure this out? Whoa, okay. Alright. So this is gonna be laying out like the Academy. What is this place? So we're, like, navigating the scene of the murder within the labyrinth. That's cool. And there are three doors? Let me guess. Each one represents the three different girls. So they were all involved in it, like I thought, right? It looks like it's up to me. There it is again. Otherwise, why three doors? Huh? Why three doorways? I like the blood on the white wall. That's pretty cool. How what? This isn't okay at all. This could kill me. Bro, I'm the one that got slashed with a scythe across my fucking neck, okay? Those are kind of Shinigami's versions of hickey, so you get used Never to it. Mind that. Look. It's a symbol of love and trust. Hmm. It seems the oh. Separated based on the how done it aspect of the case. Oh, that's not at all what I expected. Done it. Okay, the ones that I really want to go through are the yellow one first and foremost, and the blue one. I want to see if my theory about the squirt gun and the fingertips is correct. Don't tell me you're a how done it virgin. I think he's every sort of virgin, Shinigami. Wait, I know what this is. I was just testing Yuma since he's a trainee. Right. Did you figure it out? I believe I did, sir. It's about how the crime was done, right? Yeah. Yep. And once we solve all three hows for the crime, then we have a foothold. The final route, the conclusion of the who done it, should appear. 
Yeah, we should be able to then deduce from the culprits who actually committed what. Is about the culprit's identity. Yeah. If we figure out how the poison was applied, it'll identify the culprit. Yeah, but I'm assuming they were all involved. Like, there was one person who actually carried out the murder itself, but I think they all played a part in executing it, is what I think it is. You sure know your stuff? So, which way should we go? We are going in the yellow door. Probably have to explore all of them, so I'll let you pick the order, Master. Yellow, first and foremost. Start with whatever route has the easiest answers, so we can solve it quickly. I'm pretty sure I'm accurate about the red one, which is why I'm not very interested in the red one right away. So we're gonna go in the yellow one. Oh wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Sorry, I didn't mean to blue ball you like that. Have you decided on the door to go through yet? Just pick one already. Okay, what does Desihiko have to say? Don't overthink it. We'll just have to take care of them one by one. All right. Okay, I just wanted to get their dialogues. You want to go with how was the poison glass chosen? Yes, bitch, I can read at a third grade level. Yes, I want to know how the glass was chosen. I think this has something to do with the spotlights, and I know Kurene was working the spotlight, right? Jeez. Oh, whoa. Everywhere we go is mega creepy. Shadow girls. Is somewhere we can take a break? That's better than the shadow dudes in Alan Whatever Wake. You want. In fact, you can rest for all of eternity. How did the culprit get the victim to choose the glass with poison in it? The spotlight, right? Mixed around on stage after all. Yeah, but the spotlight. Um, would you mind telling me the sequence of events that happened when the glasses were shuffled? So if you track the one that was poisoned with the spotlight, you can shine the light on whichever one you knew was poisoned and direct the course of the play, right? The duel of poison's cup scene began around 45 minutes into the performance. Right, it was kind of in the end game ballpark. At the start, the victim, Karen, brought the glasses and bottle from the shelf that's on the set. Right. Karen then took out the poison vial from her pocket. Okay, so they recap all this shit, so I didn't need to rewatch it all. They just but recap it for you. Was just of course. A pop. It didn't have any real poison in it. This is cool, by the way. After that, the glasses were shuffled. This is really fucking neat. This game is so much more creative than I thought it would be. Oh, that's not good. What's going on here? It's not like we're trying to find the lost ark or something. Oh, that's like a me tier joke. Good job, Desihiko. Maybe we have more in common than I thought. You remember those death maze traps that I was talking about earlier? Right. Now concentrate. Am I gonna have to hop across desks? Who shuffled the glasses during the duel of poison cups? Uh, they both did, so A. Nice. Two people on okay. stage who took turns shuffling the glasses were... Karin Karin and Karin. Waterna. And I remember Waterna gave Karin first shuffle, right? Cause she said, I'll take the remaining one. So Karin took a glass first, right? Bam. Easy. First person to choose a glass was... Damn, Yuma's Karen. better at platforming than I am. Wait until the next Shantae game, we'll see how good at platforming I am. Which glass had the poison? Uh, the glass Cotton chose. Because she's the one who died. Warna placed her mouth on a glass, but she didn't die. Right. Which means only the glass Cotton chose contains poison. Right. This way. Doesn't take a master detective to figure that out. Come on, bro. I thought I was done for. I'm surprised one desk could fit the three of us. Like Shinigami can fly. Yeah, yeah, quit being lazy and get a move on. Bitch, you can fly! There's no danger for you. You can fly. You remember when we were walking hey, for like through the sure first labyrinth? The class cotton took had poison in it? Yes. Pretty confident. Is it possible both of them were poison? Doubtful. Warna drank from the other glass and didn't die. But there was the prop glass, though. That has to mean only Cotton's glass had the poison. Why the incorporation of the prop glass? Then I thought it was just to frame somebody Karen else. To pick the glass with the poison. Well, maybe the culprit wasn't after Cotton specifically. They didn't care who wound up drinking the poison. I doubt they could have brought the extra prop glass I'm to the play. Sure about that. I don't think well, Waterna hit it, it anywhere. Was the target. I also checked the cloth for the table, and the cloth for the table uh, did not reach the floor, so it was impossible to hide anything under it. 
and it was impossible similarly for anybody to be hiding under it. But it was a good thought that I had at the time. Not remembering the properties of the tablecloth. Oh hey, it's Kudane. What's up, sexy? I like your tracksuit. Hey. This one's a cutie. She's totally my type. You haven't even talked to her yet. I'm in love. Let me tell the truth. The culprit is Warana. Why do I not believe you? Seriously? Thanks for Why do I not believe you? Maybe because I'm only, oh, 25 minutes into the mystery labyrinth and these things usually take three or four hours? Little Miss Liar Pants? Yeah, right? You serious? That was a lie? Of course it was. No lie. Varuna knew which glass was poisoned. But that doesn't mean that she was the killer, right? That doesn't mean she was the culprit. Either the glass with the poison was filled just a bit higher up, or she marked the right glass beforehand. Wait, either the glass with the poison was filled just a bit higher up. What would that mean? Oh, that she could tell which glass was poisoned given the level of the wine, I would imagine. Or she marked the right glass beforehand. That's what I think. Because if she... Hold on. If she marked the glass, she still wouldn't be able to know which one it was if she did it by fingertip coating the rim of the glass, right? Where you'd drink from. But that isn't to say that Kurene wasn't responsible for part of it shining the light on whichever glass. Otherwise, why the line in the script saying, choose your glass first, the one the spotlight hits, Not right? Warana prompted Karin to select the glass which contained poison. Prompted her? How? How would Warana prompt her? Only the two of them were on stage. She could guide Karin through the scene. Before or after each line of dialogue, she could have easily signaled her with gestures or glances. Wait, why would Warana be signaling Karin if she was trying to kill her? That doesn't make any sense. Yeah, that checks out. I don't think she's saying anything. No, that's highly questionable. There's all sorts of flaws in that logic right there. And then when it comes to me having to fight her phantom form, you know I'm gonna fuck it up. Uh oh. That's not good. Could this be? Oof. I don't like the looks of this. I get it. We have to pick the right one. Yes. I'm counting on you, Yuma. I'm I think she did. I'm gonna go with yes. I'm gonna go with yes. This way. Watch me die. Oh shit, did I actually- really? I got it wrong? Really? Okay, now I'm even more curious. Okay. Okay, I see what they did there. Don't you believe me? Why doesn't anyone believe me? Is it kind of weird that it's hot seeing her sprite cry? I don't know. Oh, wait, don't cry. I'm completely helpless. So Waterna didn't know which glass had the poison in it? Maybe somebody else did. So, oh, I see what they're doing here. Okay, so she's trying to say that Waterna is the corporate because she's guilty of something. So, like I thought, Wadana wasn't the one that poisoned Cotton, it was somebody else. That's what this is alluding to. And I'm just slow to pick up. Yeah, yeah. So, Wadana didn't know Cotton was gonna die, hence her surprise. I thought she was just acting. But of course they would give that kind of tone to it to make you think that she was just acting, and then come to the summation that she knew beforehand. But That's Cotton well played. Warna wouldn't have been able to tell which one had poison just by the amount of liquid. That's well played on their part. Well, See, that's what I was talking about, about before. The when these games itself. know how to mentally trip you up at just the right places, it's really well orchestrated. No. Like, if you think about it mentally... There wasn't a single mark on either glass. No, they were spotless. We can't let anything happen to the glasses our actors use. Yeah, but that isn't to say that the coating for the poison for the cup couldn't have been applied during the play. Because it could have. So if they were taken out of the prop room, that doesn't mean that they couldn't have been wiped with the poison, like, afterwards. Are you sure you're a rookie, Yuma? It was all thanks to your forte. Bro, I'm a rookie as fuck. Did you just see me choose the wrong glass? Did you miss that? thanks to me. 
Were you sniffing socks or something during that time? I didn't lie. <laughs> no one believes me. Everyone else is lying. <laughs> Why won't you believe me? I already told you because the mystery labyrinth usually takes about three and a half hours. There's no way it'd be over in five seconds. I don't believe that. The mystery labyrinth is a reflection of the real world, right? Uh, then maybe what she's crying about is... A reflection of the real world. Then she must have grown up surrounded by a bunch of scumbags. Oh, that's, that's it. terrible. I'll warm her up with my charisma once we're back in the real world. Charisma, he calls it. That is exactly what a scumbag is. Isn't it kind of weird that charisma has the word Riz in it? It's like charisma. I didn't need no Riz to get Shinigami. She just likes dead things, and I'm a detective, so we go hand in hand. We're two peas in a pod. Anyway, the two glasses got shuffled, right? So the odds were 50 50. If this was the real world, I would have just, just keeled over and died right there. If she hit her target, perfect. If not, who cares? Doubt it. But it's impossible to get the victim to pick a specific glass after shuffling them. By yourself, yes, but with the aid or assistance of somebody else, I don't think so. A murder in the middle of the performance. That's it. Maybe there's a reason why it had to be done during the play. My idea behind that is time constraint. Also, positioning of people and the involvement of multiple people in the murder, right? That's what I'm thinking, too. If that's the case, there could be a trick involving the stage itself. The stage itself? <laughs> trap door? Really, are they gonna bring a trap door into this? I forgot it was a stage at a school. Oh, we're gonna explore the stage with the minigame and find out. I see. How did the culprit make Karin choose the poison glass? So now we gotta By manipulating the, the stage stick. itself? Yeah, this Yuma. Yeah, I'll do my best. By manipulating the stage itself, how? This has me fucking curious, dude. I might lose a lot of health here, if I'm being honest. Is it the table? No, it's not the table. You mean somebody on stage gave the signal? No, the two of them on stage couldn't have known which cup was poisoned. Well, that means this place has nothing to do with it then. Oh, I see, I see, I see. Spotlight, I'm retarded. Spotlight, dumb, idiot. Bam. Here. I'm fucking dumb. I said so before. It's my own fault. This is it. I can't be mad. I thought it was implying that there was some sort of trap door at play, which is why I chose the stage. The culprit used the spotlight to get caught in to select the poison's glass. Right. The spotlight? How? But what I'm curious as to is if the lights turned off. How did they track the glass? Did they move the spotlight in the dark to aim at the glass before the lights turned off? And then when the light came back on, they wouldn't had to they wouldn't have had to manipulate it, right? The culprit told Cotton to take whichever glass the spotlight hit first. Hit first, right. As a matter of fact, Cotton's script had a note written in her own handwriting. Yeah, I said so as much. It said Take the glass the spotlight hits first. In her own script, right. No way! Because I'm assuming that Cotton had attempted to kill Wadana, which leads me to believe that it's either Cotton was attempting to kill Wadana or Wadana was attempting to kill Cotton. But if we've come to the summation that Wadana had not intended to kill Cotton and it came as a total surprise, then that means the culprit was somebody else and that Cotton was the one who potentially murdered Aiko, right? Because if she has no problem murdering Wadana as well, or plotting her own murder plot, then that means that she would have had the draw and the fucking knowledge to have killed somebody else, or like the drive to do it, right? If I'm thinking about this. So from here, 
You could see how the shuffling was done. Right. If you know that much, then it's pretty much solved. No, it's not. There's more to it than just that, I think. Okay, so they're here now. Wait, what is this gonna be? Who made Cotton pick the poison glass? Kurtane, right? It can't be me. It's gotta be Kurtane. She was working the spotlights. It's gotta be her. Someone who managed the lighting during the performance indicated the poison glass to Cotton. Right. Kurane. She was in charge of the lights on the catwalk. I knew it was you. Oh shit. Whoa, what's going on? Oh, and Wadana has the gun. So I was right in assuming that I was right in assuming that Wadana had poisoned the glass herself with the squirt gun. I, I knew it. Murder someone. On top of that, you used the sacred props from our play. Wait, so those two actually didn't know about it? Then who brought the squirt gun to fucking Wadana? Because if the poison had to be applied during the play, then that means that somebody else had to have been involved. Besides just Kurane herself. We already know to some degree that Wadana was involved if she's the one holding the squirt gun. She had to have been the one that poisoned the glass itself. And she couldn't have fucking brought it into the fucking theater, so it had to have been s supplied from outside, right? And the only other person left is fucking Yoshiko. Oh, I love Wadana Sprite. That looks awesome. Everything would be better if you just disappeared. Oh man, she's mean. I didn't do it. I'm not the culprit. Wait, so is, is the culprit the one that poisoned the glass? How are they going to do this? Are all three of them going to die? Or is it just going to be one of them? Because the person that actually killed Cardinum would be the one that supplied the poison to the glass itself, right? Because that's what caused her death. I'm curious to see how this is going to work. This is really cool. This is a neat concept. Please don't make me fight three dudes at once. Even if they are hot ladies in Lolita maid clothes, I don't want to fight all three of them at the same time. Oh, okay. Not the culprit. Okay, hold on. The costumes were given a final check in the wings right before the performance. It would have been impossible to hide something under them. It was Kurdene's idea to shine the spotlight on the wine glass after the shuffling scene. There was nothing unusual about Kurane during the performance. She went up to the catwalk before the play and stayed there for the duration. Okay. I'm thinking it's going to be the testimony of the costume staff. Because we're not super far into this battle yet, so I think it's going to be the testimony. Oh, am I defending her? I am. I'm defending her against them. Oh shit, come on, dude. I dodged. Oh, I see. That's the one that I have to... I see. I think. Okay, which one am I... Which one am I refuting here? Because both of those are refutable. Didn't you already prove Kurane got caught in to choose the poison glass? So doesn't that make Kurane the murderer? Could she really have done it? Could she have planted the poison? Kurane's action during the play might give us some clues. Check the solution keys again. Kurane's actions during the play. Wait, hold on. I don't... Is it going to be the testimony for the lighting staff? Okay, I'm not refuting that one. Wrong? Really? What the fuck? 
According to the solution key, Kurene was on the catwalk for the duration of the play. Wouldn't have been possible for Kurene to pour the poison. Right, so that's what I refuted, isn't it? Can't I refute that she's the murderer with that info? If she had to be on the stage itself to apply the poison to the glass, how is that not refutable? I don't understand that. There we go. Like, it's hard to surmise the reason that they're using there. A little bit. After 30 minutes, but the murder occurred 45 minutes into the play. In other words, the poison had to have been poured into the glass after the play began. But Kurene was up in the catwalk even before the play started. She was up there the whole time, too. If that's the case, it's impossible for Kurene to have poured the poison. Huh. Okay, so like, I had the right reasoning, I just applied it to the wrong statement, I guess. Wait, what's going on? Cause like, a few of those were discernible to be able to apply that logic to. Didn't you say Kurene used the spotlight to get Karen to pick the poison glass? I did say that. Yes. But she couldn't have poured the poison into the glass itself, herself, right? Which means she can't be the culprit. Okay, so that means that I'm right about Wadana applying the poison with the squirt gun. There's no way that isn't what happened. And the poison was not poured from the catwalk, so that like I initially thought. Is... <laughs> I don't get it at all. I'm I glad know. I read into this further. I'm glad that I went with my intuition and looked into this. I think I'm right about the squirt gun with the fingers shuffling the glass, like, with one hand. I think I'm right about that. And then using the spotlight as a resource to be able to know which glass was poisoned. So that means that one of them must have plotted to murder Cotton, but the other two did not know about it at all. Given the reaction from the previous section. So that must mean that Wadana didn't know about it, so... Did Wadana not know that she was applying the poison to the glass? If so, how is that possible? Yeah, I know that. I just had a gut reaction to what she said. Unless somebody had plotted to murder one of the two but didn't know who was going to die. But if you have a murder target, you wouldn't leave it up to a 50-50, so that doesn't make sense. So if Wadana was unaware that she was applying the poison, she wouldn't have applied it to her own fingers herself, would she? Huh. Okay, this just got even What's more confusing. It's a dead end. Hmm. It doesn't seem like there's a hidden question here. This really is a true dead end. Because if Wadana wasn't the one that poisoned the glass, then what like she had to have been. But she was surprised when Cotton died, which would imply that she was unaware that the murder was going to take place. A true dead end? It means you can't reach the truth just by answering, how was the poison glass chosen? Then it was all a waste of time? Well, they should have at least left us a treasure chest or something. Hey, Yuma? Hey, how do you know there's treasure chests in the labyrinth? Desihiko's not playing blind. Somebody knows something they shouldn't. Well, reaching a dead end is expected. Somebody was caught using a walkthrough. Somebody's been on IGN.com, haven't they? Oh, totally. You are always right, Shinigami. That isn't true. Yeah, he really does, doesn't he? And Yuma's about as enthused as I am. For now, let's head back to where the roots change. Time for a convenient magical spell. That shortens my lifespan. Hocus Pocus? Is it Zoom or Hocus Pocus? What does Hocus Pocus do? Zoom? Yeah. What does Hocus Pocus do? Now I want to know! I can't live my life not knowing. 